Hi kids, welcome to the fort, where each week we get to read stories together. I thought before we started today's story, I might take a nice drink of cool, refreshing water, so that way I'll be able to tell the story well. All I'm going to do is just take a nice, real big drink of... Wait a minute, this water's disgusting. It's got sand, it might have a stick or two in it, it might have some mulch in there. Yuck, should I drink it? No? I agree. This is gross. I'm not going to drink that. Well, in today's story, called The Prince's Poison Cup by R.C. Sproul, the main character has to wrestle with the idea of drinking not just some yucky water, but a whole cupful of poison. Let's find out what happens in our story. Once upon a time, there was a great king. He was called the King of Life because he had the power to make anything, even living things like plants, animals, and people. The king made a beautiful park filled with trees and streams, lakes and meadows. Each day, the king came to the park and visited his subjects, the people he had made. They were very happy as they walked together in the beauty of the park. In the center of the park, the king placed a fountain up from the fountain bubbled beautiful water that looked cool and sweet. But the king had told the people, you may drink from all the streams in the park, but you may not drink from the fountain. The water in the fountain will harm you. Do not drink it. At first, the king's subjects enjoyed spending time with him so much they didn't even get close to the fountain. They loved the king and they wanted to please him but they began to get curious. They wondered why he didn't want them to drink the water from the fountain, which looked so pure and refreshing. One day, a stranger in a long black cloak appeared in the park. The people didn't know it, but the stranger was the king's arch enemy. He told the people that the water in the fountain wasn't bad at all. He said that if they would try it, the water would do wonderful things for them. It would make them as great as the king himself. But the people were very curious about the water. It didn't seem fair that the king wouldn't let them drink from the fountain, so they decided to try it. The stranger filled a cup with the water from the fountain and gave it to the people, and they drank it. But terrible things happened when the people drank the water. Their hearts turned to stone. After that, they no longer felt any love for their king. They didn't even want to be with him anymore. They stopped coming to this park to spend time with him. Instead, they moved to a desert far away from the park, and they built themselves a city called the City of Man. The King of Life was angry with the people, angry they had disobeyed him. He knew that because of the people's terrible violation of his command, he would be justified in destroying their whole city. But the king still loved his people, and felt sorry for them in their pain. The king was very wise, and he had known that the people would drink from the fountain, and he already had a plan to help them. He went to his son, who was the prince of the kingdom, and said to him, I want you to help heal our subjects. It was an awful task. The king gave the prince a golden cup and told him to go to the city of man. There in the central plaza of the city, the prince would find another fountain. But this fountain was not filled with sweet-looking water. It was filled with terrible poison. The poison was made up of the king's anger over the people's disobedience. One drop of the poison would kill a strong man, but the king told the prince to use the golden cup to drink a whole cupful of the poison from the fountain. He said if the prince would do that, his subjects would be healed and could come back to the park. The prince loved his father, and his people. And even though the mission sounded very hard, he was de determined to fulfill it. So he started on a journey to the city of man. Several of his friends went with him. On the way to the city, the prince and his friends stopped by a pond. The prince stared into the water, which was beautiful, calm, and blue. But as he continued to gaze into the water, something strange happened. In his mind, he saw a large cup filled with a dark, 
murky liquid. He knew it was the cup of poison that his father had commanded him to drink. The prince closed his eyes and shook his head to get the picture of that awful cup out of his mind. For a moment, he thought about turning back, but he remembered the king's order. He had to go to the city of man. He knew that was where the poison was. When the prince and his friends arrived in the city, they saw it was a terrible place. The streets were dark and filled with mud and trash. Many of the homes were broken down and the people were unfriendly and suspicious. Someone recognized the prince as the son of the king of life. Because they no longer loved the king, the people began to treat the prince quite badly. They shouted curses at him and they spat at him, taunted him. Some even tossed rocks at him or slapped him as he passed. The prince trembled in fear and began to sweat. He loved his father, but he couldn't help wondering if there was another way for the people to be healed. He wondered if he really had to drink the poison. He thought about the golden cup he was carrying and said to himself, I wish I didn't have to drink this cup. As the prince struggled with his fear, he remembered the words of his father, you must drink the cup. It's the only way to heal our people. More than anything else, the prince wanted to please the king. So right then and there, he decided that he would not turn back, but would drink the poison just as his father had asked, no matter what pain or suffering it might cause him. The prince's friends also became very frightened as the angry mob of people grew around them. One by one, all his friends ran away. Soon, the prince was all alone in the midst of the angry people, but he kept looking for the fountain that was full of poison. Finally, the prince entered the plaza. In the center of the plaza was the fountain, and standing by the fountain was a man in a dark cloak. It was the king's arch enemy, the one who had persuaded the people to drink from the fountain in the park. The prince approached the fountain. Without saying a word, he took out the golden cup his father had given him, and he held it out to the man with a cruel smile. The man filled the prince's cup with the water from the fountain and gave it to the prince. The angry people of the city gathered around the fountain to see what would happen next. The prince looked at the poison that filled his cup. It was dark, murky, and smelly. He was horrified and disgusted by it. He knew it would kill him. But he looked around the faces of the angry people and he remembered that their stony hearts would be healed if he drank it. He put his lips to the edge of the cup and began to drink. The poison tasted bitter. He wanted to spit it out, but he had promised his father he would drink it all. The poison burned his throat, but he continued to swallow. He finished it all right down to the last sip. When the poison was all gone, the prince bowed his head, closed his eyes, and died. He fell to the pavement beside the fountain. As he fell, the man in the dark cloak laughed with glee, for he thought he had killed the king's son, and all the people gave a, gave a great shout of triumph. Ooh, here's some cool pictures of what happens next. the pictures cool in this book? Just then, someone else entered the plaza. This person wore a cloak that was a brilliant white, so bright no one could look at it. As he walked, the ground trembled. He approached the fountain. As he came, the man in the dark cloak stopped laughing. In dismay, he tried to shield his eyes from the brightness of the newcomer's cloak, but it was impossible. He began to run away, and as he screamed, as he ran, he screamed, The King of Life has come! Run for your lives! All the people fled, hiding themselves in the alleys and the doorways around the plaza. The king stopped beside the body of the prince. 
Kneeling down, he touched his son. And when he did, the prince opened his eyes. He was alive again. The king of life had brought the prince back from death. At that moment, the liquid bubbling up out of the fountain changed. No longer was it dark, murky poison. Now it was beautiful, clear, sweet water. The poison quickly drained away and water filled the fountain. The water glittered in the sunlight and tinkled merrily as it fell into the fountain. Its sweet, fresh smell drifted across the plaza. The water seemed to be alive. The prince stood up and found the golden cup. Going to the fountain, he held it under the water and filled it to the brim. And then he turned to the people and he held the cup out to them. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink, he called out. And the blowing wind seemed to carry his word throughout the plaza and among the people watching from the shadows. At that point, an amazing thing happened. The hearts of the people began to change, growing soft and warm once more. Some people's hearts remained hard and cold, but all around the plaza, the hearts of men and women, boys and girls, old people and young children, were transformed. Slowly, fearfully, those whose hearts were changed began to approach the fountain. They had always been repulsed by the horrible poison, but the prince and the water he offered looked so glorious they could not hold back. Finally, one little boy approached the prince and timidly took the cup. Then he took a small sip and swallowed the water. The people watched anxiously, but nothing terrible happened. Instead, the boy simply looked up at the king and the prince with love and gratitude. He had been taught to hate them, but now the hate was gone. Seeing that nothing bad happened the boy, to the boy, after he drank from the cup, many other people quickly followed his example. They no longer wanted to run and hide from the king. Instead, they came to drink from the golden cup, and all those who drank praised the king and the prince for healing them. They saw that the terrible poison the prince had drunk was wonderful medicine for them. Although it tasted awful to the prince and caused him to die, it had healed their stony hearts. After that, the people joyfully began to visit the park once more, where they took great delight in walking with the king of life and the prince who had restored them to life again. Thank you for letting me read you The Prince's Poison Cup by R.C. Sproul. I hope soon you'll come back and hang out with me again in the fort, and I hope we can read another story together.